Hello and welcome to a new Blender Developer sneak peek. I'm your host Thomas Beck and I'm thrilled to give you an in-depth look at three new and exciting features in Blender 2.78 that still has no release date. So be sure to get a test build on builder.blender.org. I'm really sorry for being absent that long, but first I'm becoming a father, father very soon and had to prepare everything for the arrival of my son. And second, my translator decided to withdraw from our contract, so I'm in the need of a new German to English translator. If you know someone who is a translator and keen on translating a Blender book, then please forward this call for help. But now I wish you a lot of joy with the following sneak peek. So let's come to the GLSL Cycles notes. With the 2.78 release, we will support much more of those nodes that you find in there under shift a texture and then in this category and as you can see now they are all sorted all those shaders are now sorted no more mixed up shaders there um, when you insert such a node like the brick texture for example let me just switch to them then you'll see that the viewport that is a live view here on the viewport that the viewport is reflecting all your changes directly like those and not only for the brick texture but also for the checkerboard texture like this one the magic texture as you can see here scale distortion, all those parameters are supported. The noise texture is supported as well, even with all nodes behind or before that. Then the uh, gradient texture is supported now, the Voronoid texture with different scales as well, the wave texture, the image texture as you may have guessed that was supported previously as well. And what did I miss? Did I miss something? I don't think so. So those are all this, uh, um, those are all supported in the new 2.78 release. And let's now maybe switch to the new freehand curves drawing modes. Ah, see guys, that's exactly why I hate and love doing sneak peeks. I was just uh, rendering this complete sneak peek out. Then when uh, Sergey committed a new feature that is so perfectly fitting in this uh, sneak peeks topic that I read it everything and insert this um, small feature that I'd, I'd like to show you now. So forgive me when I'm not jumping to the next feature now because this one was too important to omit it. That is um, bump mapping support in the GLSL um, mode of Blender Cycles. So we're switching to the material mode, then we are going to the texture paint mode, say, uh, well, let's just unwrap it um, with the sphere projection. Then we are going to add a paint slot, let's just take the normals, and then we've got a default material created here with our image texture. Let's just connect that with the diffuse so you can see that when I'm now painting on it like that then it's working that is nothing new that is nothing fancy but the new and, not, and, and fancy thing is that we can now say bump insert a bump mapping node connect that with the normal input then disconnect this one and uh, connect the color with the height and when we now lower the intensity of the color here, so we see it a bit better and increase the strength, for example, to four, then we can draw the bump mapping directly on the surface of the sphere. Isn't that cool? I really wanted to show that to you. So yeah, that's the feature. And now let's continue with the normal next feature. Open tunes, maybe you have heard of it, was open sourced recently that is a tool for TD, uh, 2d animation and was used by studio ghibli to make those awesome movies and um, this tool uh, included a freehand curve drawing 
option. And Campbell was uh, keen on how they do it, uh, on find out how they do it, and uh, inspect the code and transfer this code to Blender. And so we have now a freehand drawing mode for curves in Blender. And that's just a simple curve here, an ordinary curve as you uh, have it in Blender since ever, but with an uh, bevel object. So when you look at this um, busy circle, that is this one, and you scale or scale it up or scale it down, then you see the curve is behaving appropriately. That is all nothing new, nothing fancy. But let's now delete this curve, delete it, and then hit spacebar and say draw. And then you see there is a curve, draw curve now, with the hotkey shift and then the uh, left mouse button, or the right one if you changed it, which I don't recommend. Um, and when we now do that, then you can see that I can draw curves and when I let the left mouse button go then the curve is drawn. So that's a really convenient and easy way to draw curves and has plenty of options. One of them, um, uh, some of them I'd like to show now. Let's therefore just delete the curve again. So let's look first at the type combo box here. That uh, type is um, for drawing polylines, like there. When we have now uh, drawn this curve, then they are constructed from poly points. And when we switch that back to Bezier and we draw, then you see all those points are control points that are um, Bezier control points. Then the tolerance, the tolerance, just, let's just delete those. The tolerance gives you a um, jittery curve if the tolerance is very small or a um, interpolated curve like you see here when the tolerance is high. So this one is for low tolerance, many control points. This one is for a high tolerance with very few control points. Then the let's yeah, just, let's let's just uh, leave the tolerance at one and detect corners is doing something with the tolerance because when you are drawing a corner like this one, then there are control points in this corner point here. See, in this one, and this um, control point is not aligned, as you can see here. I can move those handle in handles individually. And when I would deactivate detect corners and you would draw such a corner, then you would see that the corner uh, control point is aligned. So this detect corners in combination with corner angle defines how um, Blender detects what a corner is and how it treats this control vertex. Okay, so that's this, then the pressure radius. That's um, very interesting if you have a drawing tablet, because then you can um, draw the curve and when you press um, stronger on your tablet here, then the taper radius would be high here. And if you have a uh, very low pressure, uh, uh, pressure point there, then you would have a very small um, radius here. With the taper radius, you can define how Blender is treating the tapering of the curve. So when you say 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, that would mean that along the curve, let's just increase the tolerance a bit so we can't, control, uh, can't create that many control points. So along the curve is Blender doing the following at 0 0.5 position along the curve, that's, that means there, the taper, taper is a one, and then it's decreasing again from the 0 0.5 uh, position along the curve to, towards the end position to zero. So you define with this, um, with this taper radius when the tapering starts and where it ends. The third and last feature that we're looking at today is the uh, smoke heat attribute. And 
to um, tell you that beforehand, the smoke can now be rendered on GPU. So uh, smoke cycles can now be rendered on GPU. I repeat it because it's really important for many of you out there. And that was already introduced in the last build in the 2.77 release. So if you missed that, now try it out. Um, but this time we're having a new attribute that we can uh, access. So just to repeat, so every one of you knows those attributes. The first one is the density attribute. That's, let's just switch to um, our viewport renderer. The density uh, tells Blender to use the smoke density. So everything that is uh, in the smoke radius, like you see here is now given to the shader. The flame dimension is uh, accessible via the flame attribute. There you can see the flame. Let's just control it. Yeah, that's our flame. Then there is the smoke color attribute that's accessible by using the word color. So let's then just use the color. That's the color. As you can see here, it's correct. And now let's come to the last one. And that was the one that was uh, added just recently. And that is the heat attribute. And heat means that in there, right in there, it's very hot. And out on the outside, it's uh, getting colder. So Blender is now using a factor from minus one to one to define how hot it is and gives this value to the shader. So with this um, with this fire temperature node with this uh, with this heat attribute you can um, create a heat map or something like that this concludes the developer sneak peek i hope that you had fun watching and learning new stuff and i hope to see you on my google plus youtube and twitter page share the sneak peek to make all the new features well known and please share my call for help on the book translation that would be awesome and now Happy planning.